that's Sandra here for Lisa Horton Crafts. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really bright um, multicoloured flower card. I'm going to be using my Summer Petunia stamp and die set from the Lisa Horton Crafts. I'm going to use the largest flowers. Um, just I didn't think they'd actually fit onto this panel, this watercolour panel, but it does. So I'm going to go with the bigger one. I'm just laying down a selection of my favourite Distress Oxide colours. I was actually inspired by a, a photo that I saw and it was a, like a multicoloured rose. So I decided to try and do something quite similar. So what I've done is I've stamped it in all these colours and then I'm using these outline colours as a sort of guide as to what colour I'm going to go with with the watercolour, if that makes sense. Um, it just kind of gives me a starting, starting place with everything. I'm just, as I said, just going by the, the colours that's on the outline. I'm not a watercolourist by any means, I'm sure whoever's watching who can watercolour will uh, know that. I'm just putting down the colour and spreading it out with a little bit of water. I'm really loving like all the bright sort of colours at the moment. I think because of the time of year, like we've got snow and ice and everything just now and everything just seems so dull. So it's nice to think maybe a bit of springtime or something. Makes me think of spring anyway, all the nice bright colours. And flowers as well. So I'm just adding like a, a little bit extra water and the colours that's next to each other, sometimes just mixing them on my little sort of polythene palette there so that it merges together a little bit better on the actual card and then once I have actually done this I'm going to go put it back onto the stamping platform and stamp again in the exact same place just to sort of make the outline a little bit more noticeable And this little rose, I'm just going over it with sort of more contrast and colours. I should have done that at the start, but um, I kind of got carried away, <laughs> as usual. I'm um, just putting a little bit of yellow down. The colours I've used were Squeezed Lemonade, Twisted Citron, Picked Raspberry, Carved Pumpkin and Peacock Feathers. I'm sure, yep, yeah, that's it. So now... As you can see, that's what I was just talking about. Putting more of the the random colours down on the stamp and re-stamping it. And it just gives it that little bit of, um, what do you say, contrast? Definition. Definition's a word. And then adding some clear embossing powder over the top. Tidying it away straight away because that is an accident waiting to happen in my life anyway. And heat setting it and just keeping the, the gun moving so it doesn't warp the card too much or scorch it. Now I've took the companion die and I've cut out the flowers as well. Now I'm going on to the, the panel that I've cut out using the loops and bubbles um, die set, slimline die set from Lisa Horton as well. And again I'm adding in the same colours. And just really randomly, not putting too much effort into ink blending here at all. And then using the loops and bubbles um, die, I've created a stencil and I'm just adding sort of bubbles with the same colours over the top. Not seeing them that much, but it gives a little bit of extra detail. I mean, I do end up covering it a lot with the flowers, but... I was having so much fun making this panel, so I just kept going. And then I'll add some splatter with water. And I really let that sit before I blot it away to give that really nice watered look. And then I also added a little bit of splatter with my inks. Now I've used the outside panel of the loops and bubbles. And I've cut out just the, the frame bit because I like to keep my glitter card stock for something else as well. Now I'm going in with my embossing ink and this time I'm using white embossing 
powder and the reason for that is my clear embossing ink is not very clear anymore so I've got to use the white and just make sure the the whole bit of the embossed area goes shiny any sort of bits that are still powdery will just wipe away and that's no good at all especially if you're going to be ink blending and I just always give my stamping platform a little clean so that it takes away any powders <coughs> Excuse me. And just using my wet adhesive and popping it on to a gold. What I've actually done is the bits in between the flowers, I took my craft knife and I cut it out so that you can see the gold shining through from the back. And then putting the whole thing onto the panel. And then I'll put the sentiment over at the bottom as well. And I think I'm going to put some jewels on, yeah, so putting the jewels on. So anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this. I think it's something just a little bit different. Um, if you have, please like, subscribe, leave a comment on um, both Lisa's and my own page. That would be fab. Um, I really appreciate it and it lets me know that you're liking what you're seeing or not. <laughs> I'm just going in with some Nouveau drops and gold to finish that off there as well. And I'm going to add just a little bit, tiny drops. For some reason I can't master these. They still go a bit flatter rather than staying pearl shaped. Any tips, please let me know. I'm really enjoying doing these videos. I hope you're enjoying watching them. And just putting something down to keep it from curling up. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.